In this video, we'll see one more important continuous probability distribution that occurs very frequently in practice, uh, known as the normal or Gaussian distribution. And I'm only going to briefly motivate it by saying that uh, if you start with a binomial distribution, and you take the number of trials to be extremely large, but keep the probability of success constant. So it doesn't have to be uh, too small, like it was for the, uh, the Poisson case. You can go through similar steps like as we did previously. Uh, then you can arrive at a new distribution whose probability density function is given by this. This is the, the famous bell-shaped curve. So this typically has a shape like that. The peak is given by the mean and the width is given by this parameter sigma. Okay, so this, this is what we get from the properties. So if a random variable is distributed normally, this distribution has parameters mu and sigma squared, then the expectation value is equal to the parameter mu, which is the mean of the distribution, and the variance is given by sigma squared, the other parameter of our distribution. And the normal distribution occurs extremely frequently. It's much more general than starting out from a binomial distribution. And one of the reasons or the, the reason for its common occurrence is because of what's known as the central limit theorem. So the central limit theorem says that if you have n uh, it's typically noted i i d, so this is for independent and identically distribute it. Uh, random variables. So each one of these doesn't affect the value of the other, but they all follow the same distribution. And they have mean Xi, so they, both, they all have the same mean because they're identically distributed. And variance sigma squared. Okay, and in spite of the common symbols here, they don't have to be normally distributed. When I say identically distributed, that's not that they have to be normally distributed. It could be just about any distribution. So in the limit where you have a very large number of these random variables, then the probability 
distribution of a new random variable, which we're going to call Zn, which is defined by the sum of our n independent and identically distributed random variables minus n times the mean of these random variables normalized by their standard deviation times the square root of the number of variables that we have. This tends to a Gaussian with mean zero and variance one. And it is known as the standard normal distribution. So in other words, we're saying that the random variable set n is distributed according to a Gaussian zero one. And again, remember that we didn't impose any restrictions on the type of distribution these can follow, only that they follow the same distribution. So what this is saying uh, kind of intuitively is when you have a large number of independent and uncorrelated effects that contribute to a certain cause, you can expect the result, in, uh, the result which could be uh, it's shifted and scaled like this to have a normal distribution. So when you have several things that happen to contribute to a, a certain cause and they don't affect one another, you would expect the overall distribution to be a normal. And this is the reason why the Gaussian distribution occurs so much in practice. And it becomes especially important, for example, in statistical physics, where you have a very large number of, for example, gas molecules in a room, uh, which are all bumping into each other, but they're all independent of one another. 